And joining us now to talk about your health is Dr. Claudia Dow Moline, a primary care and sports medicine physician at the University of Maryland Medical Center and founder of the Well On Your Way Lifestyle Program. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us at the beginning of a year. Many of us make resolutions. We want to eat better. We want to exercise more. We want to lose some weight. We're great at making the resolutions. We're not so great on following through. How can we do better? The biggest mistake folks make is actually biting off more than they can chew. Um, trying to make smaller goals um, and, and certainly more realistic and ones that feel within reach and a little easier is probably the best way to go instead of just diving in the deep end and getting very excited about it. Uh, while that feels great initially, most folks realize that it's not exactly the most sustainable long term. And in terms of success, sustainability actually is what probably is the most important factor. So put that in pounds. Say, say somebody watching wants to lose 20 pounds. Are you saying the resolution ought to be, I want to lose five pounds in, in a period of time and then reevaluate? How, how would you advise on that? Well, I'll be honest. I am a proponent of healthy at every size, uh, which is a perspective that allows folks to be putting healthy living first and be whatever shape and size they are designed to be. So I try to get away from setting goals that are as discrete as numbers, mainly because it probably isn't the most important thing when it comes to being healthier. Um, Interesting. So, so what, what sort of goals do your patients uh, set? Well, I, I am famous for preaching. It's more important to work the habit rather than the goal. And so focusing on the things that get you success um, helps you get to that same goal that you are interested in achieving, but not without necessarily obsessing over it and, and probably putting your head in a more productive mind space. And those goals can be highly individualized in the sense that we all have weaknesses and strengths. And so one person might have um, particular trouble with their diet in the sense of emotional eating, whereas someone else might have more of a difficult time in terms of just logistics, but without that other component to, to things going on. Um, other, other folks might have a medical condition that makes it hard for them to exercise. And so goal setting there is gonna look different for that person than, than someone without that problem. Well, tell us about the uh, lifestyle program that you founded, the Well On Your Way program. So it's a virtual only program. So we we meet with people in the comfort of their own homes or at their workplace, wherever it's most convenient for them. Um, and it does work with insurance and, and it works the same way that it does when you see any other doctor. Um, and the idea there is to first establish medically what you're bringing to the table in a very comprehensive way. So that's sort of step one. And then beyond that, uh, you know, the idea is to have more of a coaching approach to things. So instead of seeing your doctor very occasionally, it's more like what a sports coach does. You know, they show up regularly to provide support, guidance, and feedback all in the name of providing uh, help with a skill and improving performance with it. And in terms of what we do uh, to work on one's lifestyle, that's where we do more than just go over what nutrition and physical activity needs to look like. We talk about stress management and mental health. We talk about sleep health and the importance of social connections in addition to the nutrition and physical activity that a lot of people tend to think of first when, when we talk about healthy living or even weight loss. You mentioned uh, insurance. I mean, did, did they ever push back? Well, it does depend on what medical conditions exist. Um, one of the tenets of uh, lifestyle medicine is the idea that we're still treating the same disease states that conventional medicine treats, which might be part of the game plan, medication, labs, referrals, but in addition to that, to add a lifestyle intervention in order to make uh, care more comprehensive and more holistic. 
Well, and, and uh, your background is osteopathic medicine and um, that that's related, right? Yeah, very proud to be a DO, go Hokies. That's where I trained down by Virginia Tech. Um, and uh, and lifestyle medicine was not something I was very familiar with in, in my infancy in medical school, but it was actually through my sports medicine career that I learned more about lifestyle medicine and implementing it in one's practice. Tell us um, your thoughts on the new weight loss drugs. Um, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's a fad, but it's gotten very popular very quickly. How do you see the utility of um, those drugs, which I, I think are injectables, right? Yes. Um, so they are injectable medications. They come out of a line of medications that was initially designed for treatment of diabetes. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think it is very common for folks to make presumptions and have some misunderstandings about these drugs. And in that sense, what I really mean is it's not exactly a shortcut. They were all studied in addition to lifestyle intervention. And uh, truly the effectiveness of them is very limited if you don't make those changes in addition to using the medications. They primarily, at least for weight loss, work by suppressing the appetite and slowing down the GI tract to keep you fuller longer. And so what that does functionally is allow a person to eat less than they were before and not necessarily have um, strong cravings or um, compulsions to eat more than what they uh, might normally eat. Um, and so in my own practice, I prefer to take an individualized approach and base those decisions off an entire medical picture um, so that it really isn't a decision of convenience. It's very individualized. Uh, but there are certain diseases or conditions or situations where those medications are fantastic examples being diabetes, uh, conditions that have insulin resistance like PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, and even people who have food addiction or some compulsive behavior relating to their nutrition, I've seen that be very useful as well. Within the, the world of lifestyle medicine, let, let's spend a minute talking about stress. Um, sure. How, how big a mountain is that for, for a lot of people to climb and how can you help them? It is a big problem for everyone for obviously different reasons. Um, and it, it can be tricky as a provider trying to form solutions for people. Uh, work is probably the largest stressor I see in, in most of my patients' lives. Um, that being said, one of the most helpful things that I find is to take a more proactive approach instead of a reactive approach. Our instinct as a whole, as humans, is to not really think about doing anything proactively until we get the symptom of being stressed and anxious. And if anything, it, it is so easy to just right ahead of your lunch break take a five minute meditation. If you Google five minute meditation for anxiety, the top result is kind of how I start my lunch break. And you'd be surprised how much five minutes can change your day. And it's so small, so easy to do. Everyone has time for it, but don't wait till you need it to, to engage with something like that. Interesting. And, and before we go, your overall advice for people who want to be healthier at the latter parts of 2024 than they are at the beginning, where to start? My biggest advice is to focus on making small changes and not drastic ones. Think in terms of sustainability. And so what I mean by that is ask yourself, can I do this for the rest of my life? And if the answer is no, say, what can I do for the rest of my life in this domain? You know, it, it might not be cooking a, a full meal every night for dinner. Maybe you need some help with a meal delivery service. Um, tap your support system. Uh, you know, uh, think about joining a gym, joining a support group, seeing if family can help with certain things to give you breathing room to focus on yourself. Um, and even using your phone calendar to, to leverage reminding you to show up to a skill you're working on. Very good, Dr. Claudia Dow Moline at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.